10 years old, whose mother tongue is not Arabic, is not Arabic, who memorized the entire Quran from A to Z with the exact punctuation, and some people are not aware, non-Muslims in particular, that every year there are various competitions of memorizing the Quran, and some are children. And the language, the mother tongue is not Arabic. They could be Indians, Nigerians, Malaysians, Indonesians, you name it. Let alone those who find it easier even because it's their language and they can understand. No wonder. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the Quran and it was repeated in the same surah so many times. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ Indeed, we made the Quran easy for remembrance. Is there anyone who heeds it? Today in North America even, let alone the Muslim world, where you get tens of thousands of hafiz, and those brothers and sisters who come from the Indo-Pakistani subcontinent, of course, the term hafiz is very common. Someone who memorizes the entire Quran, even though my only reservation that when they lead taraweeh, uh, they read uh, so fast as if a missile is going through without thinking about the meaning. But it shows that they really uh, memorize very accurately and very correctly the entire uh, Quran. Now I wonder what, how much we're doing with time. Uh, if we get to the very last one, I'll only choose maybe one or two before I lose track myself even. About the objections, and I left that open because I didn't know which ones were going to um, deal, but with your permission, assuming that you'll, you can keep, keep awaking uh, for a few more minutes, I just address two points. The one that deals with ahruf that we mentioned earlier, not qiraat, ahruf. And related to that issue, of course, is, in a, is an objection that you hear about in written form and speeches by critics of the Quran, that Uthman must have burned other versions of the Quran, so we don't know really what was there in the Quran. So there were other Qurans in plural, and Uthman chose one of those Qurans and burn the other, so we don't know really if we have the complete Quran available. This is one issue. The second issue is that they say, all right, even Hadith literature and in Muslim historical works, there are references to the so-called other codexes, uh, the codex of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud or Abay ibn Ka'b, and said they were not identical. So how come, if you, if you people claiming that there was only one Quran, how come these codexes are already, or codices are acknowledged? or in your own uh, historical references. Well, first of all, let's go back to the issue of the seven, whatever seven is interpreted, the seven modes of expression. Again, this is not recitations. Because you see, in recitation, it's almost like, say, al-imala wa takhfif like when you say, uh, Musa or Musa. You hear sometimes some recitals. Musa or Musa. We'll talk about the same person, Musa alayhi salam. This is known as qiraat, okay? But ahruf is not exactly the same, really. So the basic question, they say, all right, if ahruf is not exactly the same, doesn't that contradict what the, Qur the Quran says, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا That if the Quran was from any source other than Allah, they would have found many inconsistencies or uh, deviations. But here again, we must say that the ahruf, or different modes of expression of the same meaning or the same ayah does not necessarily mean contradiction of meaning. It is all within what the Prophet ﷺ permitted and all within the meaning of the ayah. Let me give you a few examples. And those who are interested, there was an excellent scholarly article on the subject written by Dr. Muhammad Abdullah Draz, who is one of the foremost scholars of the Quran. It was published uh, some times back, many, many years back, maybe over 20 years in the Islamic Horizon. He has a book also uh, uh, about the Quran. I think it's called Al-Zahir uh, Al-Quraniya, something of that nature. Pardon? Al-Naba' Al-Azim, Jazakallah Khair. Al-Zahir Al-Quraniya is the, the one by Malik bin Nabi, Muhammad Abdullah, Al-Naba' Al-Azim is an excellent uh, volume on the subject. But let me just uh, give a few examples. Take one of the... Um, expressions like as-sirat. In some of the Arabian tribes, they are used to read it with sad. 
this is the more common one that we read now. Ehdina sirat al mustaqim, sad. Some of them are not familiar with this sirat. To them, it is as sirat with seen. But both of them refer exactly to the identical meaning, means the way. Ehdina sirat. Another variation that some people use and make lots of noise about that there are different Qur'ans or different versions. Uh, and when the Qur'an speaks about the Day of Judgment, about what will happen to the mountains, الجبال, huh? What does the word ihn mean in Arabic? Wool. Some tribes are not familiar with that at all. They were allowed to read it as suf. Suf and ihn. In English, both means wool. This is a sort of alternative way of expression. In some cases, you find a difference that doesn't really imply any contradiction. When you read, for example, حَتَّى إِذَا اسْتَيْأَسَ الرُّسُلُ وَظَنُّوا أَنَّهُمْ قَدْ كُذِبُوا When the messengers reach a point of desperation and they think that they have been belied, in some of the other modes of expression, which also give the same meaning. But again, some of us might wonder, why again was that allowed? Why didn't the Prophet insist on everybody reciting and memorizing the Quran according to the way he expressed it, being a Qurashayit himself? But like we said earlier, it is something that was needed at that time to make it easy for people, especially for elders. You see, when you get a child to teach them, you can teach them or write the Qurashayit uh, mode of expression. But how about people who became adult already? How could you, they grasp that in the short time that is available? So the focus in the mind of the Prophet ﷺ, which was also guided by Allah, because this uh, mode of expression, or ahruf, was not his own invention. It was also through Jibreel who allowed some of those variations. So the idea or focus here was to understand the Qur'an because the record is already kept in writing and memorization in the tongue of Quraysh as uttered by the Prophet ﷺ. But then the question that some people say, did what Uthman did really constitute interference or destruction of evidence that could have been useful otherwise to discern and examine objectively uh, the preservation of the Qur'an? And the answer is no. Number one, when Islam spread in different parts of the world, some who accepted, the masses of those who accepted Islam were non-Arabs. What difference does it make for the non-Arab whether you ask them to recite the Quran in this mode or that? Just to, to simplify the question. Suppose you don't know a word of French, okay? You're starting to learn the French language. Does it make much difference to you whether you are taught classical French French or Quebecan style of French? Get my point? It doesn't make any difference for you because you're non-Arab. You, you you're, not, you're not French speaking. You're not born uh, with this as your mother tongue. So since the masses of Muslims came from non-Arab source, what Uthman did to direct people towards the way the Prophet uttered the Quran would have not imposed any difficulty on them whatsoever. And as such, he viewed that as a transitional stage until that generation is finished, and then the new generation would all follow the dialects of, uh, of Quraysh. Another aspect is that, and this is very important in terms of scholarly verification of sources also, when it comes to the dialect in which the Prophet uttered the Quran, وسلم, we find that there is so-called tawatur. Tawatur means that it has been confirmed over and over and over again by masses of people because, as you know, the Prophet did not recite it once. Over the 23 years, he leads the prayer, and he recited all the time and people listening to him. So the confirmation has come through overwhelming evidence, whereas some of those ahruf or modes of expression came through what the scholars of Usul call Akbar Ahad. That's only through one or a few sources. And obviously, even from the scholarly standpoint, you give much more weight to the ones that has been uh, confirmed with Tawatur. Number four, and that's very important. Did Osman, radiallahu anh, take that decision on his own? 
And do you think that Muslims who believed in the Quran as the word of Allah would have allowed Uthman or anyone else 